The biggest misperception when it comes to blockchain technology is that it's one size fits all. But the reality is there's one massive problem when it comes to the largest and most popular blockchains such as Ethereum, Cardano, Avalanche, and Solana that's being widely overlooked, which is on-chain storage. If you think about social media sites such as Facebook and Twitter, they store all types of media and data from simple text to followers, likes, images, and much, much more. When you attempt to bring this on-chain, that requires thousands of gigabytes worth of data to be stored on a blockchain. 99% of all blockchains simply cannot support this. And if we truly want to decentralize social media, there needs to be a solution to this problem. Luckily, there already is. And in this video, we're gonna cover the differences between finite and infinite state apps, as well as take a look at how DSO is solving this on-chain storage dilemma. So first, let's start with what these legacy blockchains are good at. All general purpose blockchains on the market were built to support what we call finite state applications. These are applications where the amount of data or state that you have to keep on hand for each user is, well, of course, finite. For example, in order to build a financial app, all you really need to know in order to validate transactions is the value of each user's account balance. Users could transfer funds between each other millions of times, but at the end, all you really need to store is a few numbers indicating what the final balance for these users are. Essentially, all of decentralized finance or DeFi utilizes finite state applications. All of the major blockchains were built specifically to support these kind of applications and they are very good at it, which is why DeFi is now a multi-billion dollar industry. This works great for the world of finance, but as we move outside of that and into decentralized social media, things really start to change. Social media apps are what is known as infinite state applications. These are apps where the amount of data you need to store grow indefinitely with the number of actions that each user performs. For example, let's consider a typical social media app. Users sign up for a profile, they add a profile picture, they write a short bio, start adding their friends and liking photos, and so on and so forth. Every one of these actions adds state, which simply means new data is required to be captured and stored on the blockchain. With social apps, instead of having to keep just a few account balances in your state, as is the case with finite state apps, such as DeFi, you need to be able to store a potentially infinite amount of data, and the numbers don't lie. General purpose blockchains simply cannot support infinite state apps. When we examine the cost of storing just one gigabyte of state on chain, the results are startling. The cost on Cardano would be nearly $700,000, and over $900,000 on Avalanche, $1.3 million on Solana, and almost $400 million on Ethereum. But on a blockchain built specifically for decentralized social media, such as DSO, that cost is only $80. But we'll cover more on DSO later in this video. Breaking it down even further, storing a 200 character post, such as a single tweet on chain, would cost anywhere from 25 cents all the way up to a dollar or even more on any of these blockchains. With literally millions of tweets being posted every day, this cost would add up very quickly. The end result is that all general purpose blockchains have to impose storage limits in order to remain viable. This has resulted in skyrocketing storage fees that make it prohibitive to build infinite state apps on them. And that will only worsen as these chains become more popular. Nobody is trying to build infinite state applications on these blockchains because it is impossible to do so at a low enough cost or without breaking them. But as I alluded to earlier, this is where DSO comes into play. DSO is custom built from the ground up to power social applications. And that means that all of the data that it stores and indexes follows a known schema. Profiles are stored and indexed differently than posts, which are stored and indexed differently than follows, which are also stored and indexed differently than likes, and you get the idea. I know this is a bunch of technical jargon, but to put it simply, in software there is a concept known as database indexing. This is essentially the way that you structure and store information on a database. Financial apps have different indexing needs when compared to social media apps. This is why DSO is the solution to decentralized social media. It was literally built to support social apps while other blockchains are optimized for financial apps. And the beauty of DSO is that it combines the power of blockchain technology with the potential of powerful network effects. 
effects. Let's say a social app on Deso becomes popular. This brings users, wallets, and content to the whole ecosystem that other developers and projects benefit from accessing. And as a new developer who wants to build a social app, instead of having to build a capital intensive backend, you can focus on the front end and a better user experience. Imagine if you could tap into the billions of users on Facebook right now. Unfortunately, the data moding that Web2 corporations use in order to monetize users' content prevents you from doing that. But in Web3, all data is on-chain and available for developers and builders to utilize and improve upon. And from a user perspective, in the same way that you can utilize hundreds of different DeFi protocols with just one wallet, on Deso you just need one profile, which you can port across hundreds of different social applications instead of having to create a new profile and rebuild your following on every application you use. When it comes to infinite state apps and decentralized social media, the possibilities are endless Thanks to Deso. If you wanted to get started today, I suggest heading over to Deso.org and checking out the ecosystem. Just be aware, once you get a taste of decentralized social media, it's going to be very difficult to go back to Web2 social apps.